Good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, it's a pleasure for us to be here in uh, this lovely place um, in, uh, in Yamba. Um, and having this, this workshop with you, um, together with ECRA, just a short introduction from our end. We both are from uh, Fichtner Company, as Mishari have introduced already. Um, my name is uh, Theo Laukemann, head of the dissertation department, and my colleague Maximilian Schrade. Uh, we, are, we will um, guide you through this presentation and present the different parts of the seawater desalination code. <coughs> Fichtner was involved um, three years ago in uh, preparing this code with ECRA, with a committee cons consisting of stakeholders of the seawater desalination industry within Saudi Arabia um, and uh, together with CMS. Um, the purpose of this presentation is to go through the code um, and explain not the details but the main principles to give you the opportunity to ask questions in case something is not um, very clear uh, for you or when you have questions in relation to uh, topics um, of the code. We have the whole day, however the code consists of 11 parts. Uh, each part um, we try to go through within 20 minutes. Um, of course, if you have questions, you're welcome to ask the questions. But maybe we can shift the questions to a Q&A session after each second presentation. Um, but if there is something very uh, important which is required to be answered immediately, please be free to um, ask the questions. In case you have further questions in future, of course, there is the panel. Um, um, for the code, and you in, in any time you can raise concerns, questions, or make recommendations to the panel in relation to the seawater desalination code. As Mishari said already, the seawater desalination code consists of uh, 10 codes together with the general conditions, 11 parts, and the general conditions gives basically the overarching. Um, format around the uh, different uh, codes um, of this document. And again, I'd like to stress it again, although Mishari introduced already the most important um, definitions. Um, this is a slide which you see uh, throughout the presentation and the workshop more often in order to remind you. For the purpose of avoiding misinterpretations and misunderstandings, um, definitions have been introduced to the code. So in the end of the code, you see a section, uh, glossary and definitions, as well as abbreviations. And it's very important that you have this at hand when you read through the code through the different parts. Um, the definitions are used consistently throughout the code, and sometimes they sound very complicated, like desalinated water transmission system operator. It's a very long name for an entity which is known to you as SWEG, basically. Um, but it's um, a clear definition written in capital letters, um, and whenever this term um, is used in the code, you know it refers to a certain entity. Um, and this entity has um, special tasks, um, special obligations. The same with the desalinated water producer. These are producers who are operating seawater desalination plants, um, who are producing water out of seawater, so-called desalinated water, tahliya. Um, used in the code consistently throughout the parts WDSO, Water Distribution System Operator. The operator uh, who are operating the water distribution system. Um, 
and the non-seawater plant operators, not sure in Yambo area whether you have really such non-seawater plants connected to the transmission system. Um, in, in the South Asia region, there we have dams, for instance. Um, I think near Riyadh we have uh, even wells, groundwater sources, which then are operated, um, for instance, by SWCC or Movi uh, or National Water Company, and where the water is fed into the transmission system. And those plants which produce water and, and uh, supply this water to the transmission system, but where the water is not produced out of seawater, those plants are called the non-seawater plants. Another overview, and um, I hope this is not going too lengthy, but it shall, it shall illustrate the system and structure of the seawater desalination industry in the kingdom. Um, we have such structures six times, we will see this later, um, because of the six separated desalinated water transmission systems. Desalinated water transmission systems mean the main pipelines, the transmission pipelines operated by SWCC here in the kingdom, where, for instance, the desalinated water plants are connected to. The yellow dots reflect the connection points. Um, and where we have the non-seawater uh, plant operators and the non-seawater plants connected to the transmission system. And then, finally, uh, the water is, uh, will be offtake uh, from uh, the distribution systems um, illustrated here. Those distribution systems, as you know, um, are operated by NWC and Movi. Here an example with names in order to give you a better grip what what we what we mean. Desalinated water plants operated by SWCC. Here we have a SWCC plant south of Yamba. Um, two phases. The third phase is in construction uh, at the moment. But we also have Marafik, uh, which run plants in Yambo here. Um, in, uh, in, in the Royal Commission. However, to my knowledge in Yambo, the Moravic plants are not connected to the SWCC transmission system, while they are connected in Jubail, for instance. Um, but Moravic has other uh, consumers, so um, supplying the water within the Royal Commission. We have dams, groundwater sources, for instance, which may be connected to the transmission system, Illustrated here, um, right, and and then of course the distribution systems operated by NWC or Movi. The desalinated plant operators again operate seawater desalination plants, um, Swag, Morafic, We named them already, and we also have independent water producers in uh, Suaba, for instance. We have some in uh, Shukaik, but also we have some in Jubail, um, which are um, uh, private or, or private entities, separate entities, providing the water to the off-taker um, through WEC, for instance, or uh, through um, Taurid uh, in Jubail. And these seawater desalination plants, they have uh, usually more, uh, several desalination units. It's important to know, also defined, um, for the scheduling and dispatch, which will be addressed in the last section of our presentations. Transmission system. Here, the speciality is that within the kingdom, we have six separated transmission systems. One of it is Yambu, Medina system, um, but there is Azir water transmission system where Shukain plant is connected to other dams. Um, Jaiba, Jeddah, Maka, and Taif, 
several plants connected to it, and several distribution systems are connected to such a system. Jubail Riyadh Kazim, uh, the large transmission lines from <coughs> the eastern province uh, to the capital city, um, and other cities in uh, the central Saudi Arabia. The eastern province system um, connecting Khobar, Damam, um, but also uh, connected um, to Jubail to some extent. Ras al Khair in Riyadh, uh, tra water transmission system, a new system um, installed only recently within the last uh, two or three years. Maybe in future there will be further connections between the transmission systems. Um, it's important to know that, that several parts of the code refer to uh, uh, particular transmission systems. I will come later to the point when this is important. So, the transmission system operator, SWCC, they have to consider sometimes uh, um, tasks and obligations for each transmission system, but also then uh, summing up and combining information and data for the overall kingdom. Plant connected consumers. These are consumers which are directly connected to desalination plants. One uh, of the examples is certainly any consumer you have maybe within um, the Royal Commission, which is directly connected to the Moravic system, or where you have a desalination plant which has maybe the, the purpose, and this is more this situation, which maybe is not connected to the water transmission system of SWCC, but is its own uh, consumer, where this plant is then providing water to its consumer. This is a special case. And especially when it comes to water quality or connection, we will, um, we will see how this is uh, dealt with in the code. Uh, some of the obligations and regulations are not applicable for um, this connection, and others are. In the water distribution systems, in the end, all what we do here, producing water, transmitting water, is for the purpose of uh, supplying the water to the end consumers, to the people um, uh, in the different distribution systems. It's important to know that the water dis uh, distribution system operator, NWC and uh, MOVI, are not under the mandate of ECRA. However, for the purpose of the code, the boundary of responsibility includes the connection points. So whatever MOVI and NWC do, for in, uh, uh, whatever business they do, and how they do it, it's not, not yet, it's not regulated by ECRA at this stage, but the interface point, the connection points, um, these these are within uh, the mandate, and within the scope of the seawater desalination code. Um, this is important to know. Another overview um, illustrating the functions we have in the seawater desalination industry in the kingdom. Um, we have, of course, the production. This is the basis for every business here. Um, Private plants, Schreiber Water and Electricity Company, uh, Schkeik, Sepco, Javab, Jabail, um, and um, maybe others in future. We have SWCC as owner and operator of the majority of the large desalination plants in the kingdom. Um, Morafik here in Yembe uh, and in Jubail with an increasing number of uh, desalination plants but also others like Saudi Aramco, uh, economic cities, maybe larger hotel or complexes, or universities, for instance, uh, Kaust, 
um, further south here at the Red Sea coast, they have also their own plants. These are all producing water out of seawater. And then um, we have a, a group of traders, which are the off-takers, especially from the independent water producers, which is WEC um, and Tarit uh, for the Moravic plant in Jubail. Next is transmission, combining all these, while the plants here, even these plants, are physical connect, physically connected to transmission system, legally, and the contractual arrangement um, uh, has the traders in between. Um, then SWEG, of course, is connected to its own system, but also others, Morafic has a connection um, to SWCC um, for at least a part of its capacity and volume of order they produce. And finally, the distribution systems. And here are the, the, the three major players. Um, the Ministry of Electricity, uh, Water and Electricity, the National Water Company, and of course, Morafic uh, within the area of the Royal Commission. This was the introduction. Now, um, I I'd like to start with the part of the general condition. The first part in the code, the document of the code. Um, each part of the code has basically the same structure. In the very beginning, we have an introduction to this part and the scope of the part. Um, and then we have further procedures, um, uh, objectives, and, and, and requirements. So the general con conditions apply to all parties, basically, um, and namely the DWTSO. And we see uh, this entity plays a major role in the industry uh, since this combines and connects. Uh, it connects all the users. And users under the code are defined as the desalinated water producers, um, the non-seawater plant operators, and the water distribution system operators. And as I said, the general conditions gives the overarching and general frame around the other sections of the code. The core principle and assumption is that all parties the TSO and the users are acting in good faith. The code tries to assume um, the main situations um, which may occur and it tries to give guidelines, regulations and procedures for different situations and events. However, uh, for sure, the small document cannot um, comprise all conditions, all events which may occur at some stage uh, somewhere in the system. So we have to consider also unforeseen circumstances. These are all the events which are not directly addressed in the code and where we don't have specific procedures. Um, and in, in case we have such unforeseen circumstances, then the DWTSO um, shall um, apply the procedures and shall consult with affected users in such a circumstance um, and shall get a consensus from all the parties and effective affected users involved in order to the actions which needs to be undertaken. And of course, they, since they play a vital role in connecting the users um, and transmitting the water, they shall also submit necessary proposals to each of affected users in such an unforeseen circumstance. And then we have the regulator um, as, uh, the, as an authority which shall be consulted in case there is no agreement found
between the TSO and the users or among the users and in order to let them determine uh, the best course of actions in such unforeseen circumstances. One core entity, important entity for you as well, is the review panel. Um, the review panel is uh, basically your voice and as well as ECRA's voice. Um, core communication media between the users, TSO and ECRA. It must be noted, and this is also important to you, that all information and data which has to be, have to be exchanged um, for different tasks shall be treated confidentially by all users and by the TSO as well as by ECRA. So no data shall be um, published or shall be used against another user for any competitive action and whatsoever. These are confidential data. Uh, the data uh, selection um, and um, summarizing the data, making reports, are, this is done for on good reasons. To learn from actions in the past, to, um, to have a basis for decisions, <coughs> future projects, etc. We will see that later. Um, disputes may not be prevented um, on the day-to-day day -day business and actions could happen that users do not agree on uh, uh, decisions or will have a dispute with the TSO or vice versa. So whenever there is a dispute, the code says, look, uh, sit down together, try to resolve this issue. You cannot leave it open, it must be resolved somehow. So the code says, Take 20, time, uh, 20 business day uh, period and within that try to resolve it. If you have it resolved, perfect. If not, if the dispute is un unsolved, then there is a reference to the um, dispute resolution process which is uh, referred to in the electrical law. There was always a question in the, in the last the workshop why it's electrical law and not water law. The electrical law was the first law, um, first for the electrical, uh, electricity uh, industry, but also referring to uh, the Water Act. And since the code is a document under the Water Act, um, then in order to avoid uh, repetitions and duplications, um, Water Act and uh, the code refer to the electrical law in that um, respect. <clears throat> review panel, the code requires that the review panel is established and ma maintained. And the, re the review panel is there, um, um, taking actions, driving um, that the code will be implemented as soon as possible. And the review panel um, consists of members of all major stakeholders or stakeholder groups. Um, this is also important that everybody, regardless whether NWC, Morafic, independent water producers, SWCC, they have a voice in the panel. Um, and they can raise their concerns. The review panel is there to uh, keep the, the code working. Um, they maintain a repeating review of the code, whether the regulations and procedures are still applicable. They try to um, uh, look after potential conflicts um, between the uh, desalination code and the transmission code. Um, they also accept or, or this is the entity and facility which you can send your suggestions and recommendations um, for improving the code. Um, so please use the panel in order to uh, work with the code and improve it and keep it alive. 
when we go through the parts of the code, we see that there are certain requirements. Requirements on procedures, how to communicate, requirements on uh, establishing functions, requirements on in installation of certain equipment. Um, so when the code is, is implemented, some of the users under the scope of the code may not fulfill all the requirements from day one. Um, of course, it's the aim and the goal that everybody complies with the requirements and, and the specifications. But it's also appreciated that this may not happen from day one. It could also be that some of the um, users <coughs> believe that for them s uh, several tasks or requirements <coughs> are not applicable since they are in a special position or situation. Um, whenever users have the view that um, need to get a waiver from obligations under the code, they can initiate such a derogation process. So this derogation process um, allows, although the code is binding to all uh, the parties and, and entities, to uh, ask for such waivers. And ECRA, basically, in, in, in First of all, the TSO, Transmission System Operator, together with ECRA, will review such uh, derogation um, and may grant then waivers and derogations from certain requirements of the code um, after, after they have uh, reviewed the application. An example would be, uh, for instance, if a desalinated water producer sees that he has only one meter at the connection point. Um, the code, which we see later, requires a main and a backup meter. In order to install this meter, uh, this um, entity needs some time and may ask for whatever, half a year or a year period to bring his system in line with the requirements of the code. So they will consult um, or ask for derogation um, at the TSO. Transmission system operator will con consult ECRA on that application. And then there is a decision basically to be made whether such an application in principle is accepted or is not accepted. Um, if ECRA decides, look, no, this cannot be accepted, then this will basically lead to a situation where such a plant is not, not compliant. Not compliant with the code, uh, or compliance with the code is a basis for the license. So uh, eventually, when there is no solution in such a uh, situation, then uh, the license may not be valid anymore. However, we believe that all parties acting in good faith and uh, making reasonable uh, applications. So, and EGRA sees as well that not all the conditions can be fulfilled from day one. Derogations may be granted. Important aspect of such a waiver, of such a derogation, is that this has a certain validity period. So in that, in that um, um, case or example, this entity may get a year's time for installing the meter and getting uh, to a situation compliant with the requirements of the code. And from that validity period or expiry date onwards, it's assumed then, and this will certainly be monitored by ECRA, that the meter is installed in that case.